Is your pet currently getting flea and tick preventative? Are you using conventional drugs? Have you heard about all the side effects from seizures to liver failure to even death from some of these medications that pets are getting every single month and your pet may actually be getting too? This is why we're going to talk about natural flea and tick preventatives because I don't want any more pets to have these adverse side effects that are affecting thousands of pets across the world. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. This is our weekly coffee talk with the doc. Today we are talking about natural flea and tick repellents, what you can do to make your pet less tasty for those nasty little bugs and insects so that you can help them thrive and live a long and vibrant life. So as you join me, I wanna know, are you using conventional medications? Which ones are you using? Are you worried about those side effects that are happening? Why are those side effects happening? And why might your vet not be talking about that? So we're gonna be covering that at the start and I'm gonna be giving you lots of tools. So make sure you have a piece of paper, a pen, so that when you're following along, I'm gonna even give you a DIY recipe that you can use safely on your pets to help repel those fleas and ticks. Here in Northern Colorado, we're already seeing ticks. They're all coming out and it's warming up. Everyone's getting out there. There's long grass. That's where the ticks tend to, to live. And the biggest thing is, is that there's so much we can do to reduce the usage of these strong conventional medications. So the ones that I'm referring to are things like Brevecto, Cridelio, Semperica, NexGuard. And the problem that we're having with them as we're doing more research. So Dr. Jean Dodds is a well-known veterinarian who's diving deep into why we're seeing these awful side effects. And I've worked with a couple patients. One was in liver failure, like end-stage liver failure. There's been neurological like tremors, seen behavior changes where the pet, they get a dose and all of a sudden they become aggressive. Why would that happen? Well, these drugs, the way they work, the way that they kill the fleas, the way that they kill the ticks, is that it's actually a neurotoxin. That's how the chemical works. So when they made these products, it was supposed to be against a neurotoxin against arthropods. Those are the insects, right? So it wasn't supposed to affect our pets. However, all these side effects that we're seeing now, those are neurotoxic side effects. So the drugs are actually affecting the neurological system of our pets or potentially can. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of pets that are on these medications every single month and don't have an issue. But when your pet develops end-stage liver failure and there's nothing you can do and they were perfectly healthy the day before you gave it, that's a problem. It doesn't matter now that there was only one, which there isn't, there's thousands of cases. But when it's your pet, when it's your family member, and there's other alternatives, we need to be talking about that. So that's really important. So we need to be looking at what is going into our pets. Is it potentially causing these reactions, harming their health or harming their immune system? And there's a time and a place for these. I'm not against conventional drugs. And sometimes when you're in like a midst of a flea outbreak or there's a bunch of ticks like Yes, maybe you give a dose and then we're going to talk about things like detoxing, you know, but it shouldn't be that we just give this thing every single month as a preventative, because there's a lot of other things we can do to help support your pet's overall health so that they don't have to have these side effects or there's not a risk because I can tell you, it can only take one dose sometimes. That's all that it takes for us to see these horrible side effects. And I don't want that to be your pet. So what is the first thing that we should be looking at when we're looking at how do we keep these nasty insects from getting on our pets and causing a problem? We have to go back to how do we optimize our pet's health? Food. When we start feeding like fresh food diets, adding in fresh foods, supporting the immune system, using species appropriate diets, we talk a lot about what does that look like? So for 
our cats, making sure that we're getting them those higher protein diets, the wet food or raw food diet for our dogs, making sure if you have to feed a kibble diet, adding in those vegetables a couple times a week, those steamed leafy greens, your steamed broccoli, the things that are really helpful that have high phytonutrient content that are going to support the immune health. So that's number one. It will always be number one. Food is always the foundation for health. So look at how you can transition your pet to something that is less processed to something that is more whole food, or look at how can I easily integrate in some of these real foods into my pet's diet weekly. Now, the other options that we have for boosting immune system health that can play a big part for helping your pet's immune system, local honey. Who here is using local honey? And this is a great option. We think about local honey when we're looking at allergies, right? Because we're getting all the, we're like desensitizing our system to the, the trees, the pollens that are in our area. And so you shop local, right? We need the local honey. Typically within like a hundred mile ra radius would be classified as local honey. And you're gonna do half a teaspoon uh, per 15 pounds per day of that local honey. Just add it right into your pet's food. Usually they take it just fine. And that's gonna add a nice little adjunct to supporting their immune system. Some of the other things too, garlic, raw, minced, freshly minced garlic. So here's the thing. If you're still thinking garlic is toxic for your pets, it's not when we use it appropriately. So garlic's in the onion family. Onions are toxic to dogs um, and cats. It can lead to things like hemolytic anemia where the red blood cells break down when they're given the larger dosage. So say you give your pet leftovers and there are a little bit of onions in that that will not cause an issue most likely for your pet. So there's a lot of fear and there's been a lot of like miseducation around garlic, especially, and garlic has a lot of medicinal properties. You have to give a really astronomically high amount of garlic for it to cause a problem. So I'm not talking about garlic powder. We want the fresh garlic, you mince it, use it within 15 minutes in your dog's food. And that actually has a lot of medicinal properties for supporting the immune health. It has antibacterial properties, antiviral properties. It has anti-parasite properties, but we have to use the fresh product. So you can't just go to the store and get the minced garlic because we've lost a lot of those medicinal properties. So that allicin that's formed right when we're crushing it. So your dosage that you'd wanna use for your garlic is gonna be a quarter teaspoon. So freshly minced within 15 minutes, for 15 pounds and then just mix that in with your pet's food. You can use this daily or so, especially if we're in like the flea and tick season because it's gonna be a natural repellent for your dogs. So start adding that in. You can use it daily. If you just wanna give it a couple times a week, that would be fine too. Because remember, we're not only getting the anti-parasite results, we're also getting good other properties that are helping with antibacterial, antiviral, supporting the immune system. So those are a couple of things that you can add into the food. Now there's what we also want to look at, and this is if, especially if you're giving a monthly heartworm preventative, if you are using these conventional flea and tick products, we need to be doing detox for your pet's body. And this is, this month is all about detox. We're going to be talking about that in our VIP natural pet parent club, how to, and why you should be detoxing your dogs and your cats on a regular basis. So make sure you join us if you're not already a part of our VIP community. We're gonna be going deep with our webinar at the end of the month. But the detox is so important, especially when we think about what do our pets come into contact with every single day. We live in a toxic world. We're surrounded by pesticides. The food has pesticides in it, especially if you are feeding processed foods. Studies have shown and I always go back to this because it's so crazy that the numbers that uh, in, in these studies from the uh, Habri, so they showed that pets, dogs that were fed a kibble diet had 32 times the amount of glyphosate in their urine compared to people. When they were fed a raw food diet, they had zero. So our pets are being exposed to this and what's happening, and I see it outside my window, all the time now, because we're getting it, we're spraying, getting into summer, is the yards are getting sprayed. 
you're walking your dog through that. They might even be eating the grass. So we need to be detoxing them to help support the liver and help support their body process those toxins to get rid of it. So what are some of the good things like liver support that we think of? Milk thistle, your burdock root, your dandelion. So they're in a lot of supplements that are made specifically for detoxing your pets. So that's, you can use that product. You can use something from like Glacier Peaks that has an immune defense um, that is, or I think it's called Peak Immune. They also, there's a daily defense one that has like your greens in it. It has your milk thistle. It has all these really good nutrients that are supporting the detox pathways. The other thing you can do is you can just use milk thistle, like, or you can get a product from like animal essentials and a glycerin base and use it for two weeks after you give a conventional medication. So rotating or using these daily products that are labeled for daily usage to support your pet every single day. So that's really important. Phytoplankton is another great one that provides a lot of these nutrients to support detox. Um, Adored Beast has a great phytoplankton product that has a lot of vitamins and minerals too to help support the body. Now, when we're thinking about detox, we're thinking about detoxing internally, but we also need to be thinking about detoxing externally. So what would that look like? When we're thinking about detoxing externally, we need to be washing our pet's bodies. Think about all the things that they're coming into contact with that are sticking to their fur. And if we have fleas and ticks, fleas drown in water. So by shampooing them, lather them up, get them all wet and let it sit there for a few minutes and you can drown the fleas. So if you're in a heavily like bird and flea tick area and doing this bath during those times once a week can make a really big difference, especially when you're using some of those other things, you're feeding like the best food that you can feed, you're supporting their internal detox pathways, but definitely bathing them is really, really important. So how can we support the physical body? So not only with bathing, but what happens, right? You go for a walk, you go for a hike, and your dog is covered in ticks. So here's a really simple tip that you can use to help prevent ticks from attaching to your pet's body. Get a lightly colored, light t-shirt and throw it on your dog before you go for a hike. How great, like it's super simple, right? And I heard that the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, that is the like simplest thing ever because the ticks, it gives them less surface area on the body to attach to. And when you use a lightly colored t-shirt, it's a lot easier to see if something's attaching to your pet. So definitely get a light t-shirt, throw it on your dog, but you also need to be looking for ticks afterwards. So if you have a yard that has a lot of bushes, long grasses, you need to be checking. We need to be tick checking just like we would for ourselves. So I don't know about you guys, but when I go hiking, I don't wanna slather myself in pesticides. So we're gonna talk about some of the natural things that you can apply topically to repel fleas and ticks. But the thing is, is we don't wanna be doing that for our pets either. So we need to be doing the tick checks because that's what I do for my own self. I'd be looking for, okay, is there a tick on me? Because we have a period of time where they're like roaming around. They haven't, they take a while to attach. Sometimes it can be a couple hours. And then we have this time period from when they actually attach to when they can actually transmit those awful diseases we don't want, like Lyme disease. So we have like, it can be up to three days, up to 72 hours. And so that's why it's so important to check our pets for ticks, save the ticks, send it in. You can actually check the ticks to see if they have, you know, the Borrelia, the Lyme, if they have the Rocky Mountain, if they have anaplasma. So you can send that in and actually assess, like, should I be worried as you're detoxing your pet, right? And supporting them and potentially using some homeopathic remedies um, to help in case there is something. But those are some of the simple things that you can do. Put a t-shirt on, tick check them every time. Where you want to be looking for ticks is around the head, behind the ears, lifting the tail up, checking in the groin, checking in the armpits, checking in between the paw pads, 
opening up the little toes, spreading the little toes and looking in between there because those nasty ticks will find their way in um, and you wanna be looking for them. The other thing too, so you're doing your weekly baths, but make sure you have a flea comb. This is like one of the most effective ways to get rid of fleas without chemicals. So if you're flea combing them regularly, you can find those fleas, get them off before they like set up house and go through their crazy life cycle where they're like producing each one at least like 40 eggs a day. It's an insane amount of flea eggs that one flea can produce every single day. And that's why we get into this cycle where we get flea infestations in the house and it's like a nightmare to get rid of. So using those flea combs, especially if you're in an area where you have a ton of fleas in Colorado, we don't have a lot of fleas. We do see them. Um, they have definitely become more common as the world kind of changes, the climate changes and it gets warmer. So we don't have a ton of snow here. Uh, our winters are a little bit warmer. And so we are seeing more fleas and ticks. But if you're in an area where there's like a lot of fleas and there's a lot of ticks, you need to be doing these things daily and checking. So what are some of the other things we can use that are more natural? Who here has heard of diatomaceous earth, right? Super common. And what's really, this is such an interesting um, medicine that we can use that's natural. And so with diatomaceous earth, it's like the fossilized remnants of these ocean um, species. And what they do is they finally crush them. And so it acts as a desiccant. So it dries out arthropods, it dries out insects. And it also has been shown microscopically to pierce like the body of the arthropods. And so we can use these topically, we can use it in the environment, we can use it in the food. Now here's the thing, you need to be using food grade diatomaceous earth. I always recommend that. If you're gonna be using it around pets, if you're gonna be using it in your house, you want food grade. Now, if you're using it out in your yard, you should be fine not using the food grade. So if you're sprinkling it outside in the garden to help with like pest control, um, that's different. But if we're using it on our pets, we need to be careful also with aerosolizing it. So that way, making sure that you're applying. So when you're, you're not shaking it up, it's not getting everywhere. If you have any respiratory conditions or your dog has like, or your cat has asthma, don't use it on them. Be very careful. You want to limit that. That's really, really, really important because it can irritate the respiratory tract. You can use it for just around the house, sprinkle it in the carpet and then leave it for 24 hours and then vacuum it up. If you have a dog that has really itchy skin or they get really dry, this is drying. And so if you're using it topically, don't use a ton, leave it on for a little bit if they can tolerate 24 hours and then wash them. So you're going to bathe them afterwards. Now, if you're worried about it, don't use it topically, just use it in the environment. So that's where what's really nice is we can use these things in a lot of different ways. So if there's any concern, any hesitation, don't apply it to your dog. Don't give it in the food. Um, one of the, so if you are using it in the food, so it acts as an anti-parasite treatment, that's why we're using it. Um, it can have vit like other minerals and other things that help support the body too. So that's why a lot of people will use this. You know, don't necessarily give it every single day. Give the body a break. Um, so that you're kind of rotating through what you're using. And typically for a small dog, you're using a half a teaspoon per day in the food. If you have a larger dog, say over 50 pounds, I'd stick around the tablespoon, make sure that it's like mixed in with water so it's not aerosolizing and causing respiratory issues with your dog. Um, the other thing too, so what's nice about diatomaceous earth is that we're using a mechanical like way of killing fleas and ticks, right? It's not a toxin like our conventional medications or the sprays that we're using. So that's really good. So less toxins, right? That's what we're going for. Another great way to treat the environment for your pets is to use beneficial nematodes. So you can go to your garden center and you can purchase these and they give you instructions like putting them in a spray bottle, and then you can spray the entire yard. And what's really nice about these is they'll eat like the eggs of the fleas and the ticks and the different life cycles and keep your yard clean and reduce the amount of fleas and ticks present. So super safe for using nature. Wow, oh my gosh, we can use what nature gave us rather than 
power hosing it with toxins and pesticides and chemicals. Because last year we had actually a lot of pests that I'm not used to in our vegetable gardens. And it was a battle. It was a battle. And it leads me to this next point. You can plant plants that repel insects naturally. So if you have a garden or you have a patio and you love sitting outside, I don't know about you, but like super excited for warmer weather because I love sitting outside and just being present, right? Get some plants that are gonna naturally repel your fleas, your ticks, insects. So they repel mosquitoes also. So it makes it more of a pleasant experience. Your dogs can sit with you. Your cats can sit with you if they go outside too. Um, so using things like lemongrass, rosemary, sage, thyme, plant these around you to help repel. And you can space them in your vegetable garden too. And they do the same thing and they have natural uh, you know, pest repellents, which is really cool. So definitely get some of those plants and try it out. And it leads me also to where I was battling these pests in the garden last year, neem oil. Who here uses neem oil? So neem oil is this amazing oil that actually is extracted from the seed of the neem tree from India. And it has all these amazing properties. It has antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, it heals wounds. So you can use it. So if you have an allergy pet and they're itching and scratching, you can actually use neem oil topically. And I'm going to give you a recipe soon. So, and a lot of the products that combine essential oils and some of these natural remedies that we're talking about will use neem oil also specifically for these things. So Wonderside is a great company that uses neem, they actually have a neem oil product that you can use to help with like skin infections, inflammation, allergies. So that's very powerful. And they also, they utilize essential oils and the essential oils, don't worry, we're getting there because I love essential oils. Um, but Wonderside's great because they have topical sprays that you can use on your pets. They have a yard spray that you can use in your yard. So you can use that alongside your beneficial nematodes, your diatomaceous earth. And then they also have wipes that you can use on your pets to wipe them down. And they, they're great quality, they're safe. I really like them. Cedarside is another company that's very similar. And so definitely use them. So that leads me into essential oils. So I love making DIY stuff, right? Getting, I get essential oils every single month and I just love them. My husband thinks I have a problem because we have too many of them, but it's so great because when something comes up, I'm like, there's an oil for that, we can fix this. And I just grab that and usually it fixes the problem and we don't have to use like conventional drugs or other things that aren't going to be as safe. And so you can use essential oils. Keeping in mind, I talked about the plants you can plant and guess what? The same essential oils from those plants are used in these products or you can make your own DIY sprays to help repel insects. So keep in mind, these things are repelling, not killing. So a lot of times we have to use combination of different products because it's not going to be as strong as say using something like Brevecto or your Crudelio or your Next Garden, which is actually killing. Remember it's a neurotoxin. That's why we can see those awful side effects in a lot of our pets. And so we're repelling. Now here's the cool thing. I'm gonna go back to Wonderside for just a second. Is that the wet phase form of Wonderside actually kills them, actually kills fleas and ticks. So how cool is that? So we can use the wet form and then we can, so if you see a flea on your pet, like get the flea comb out, find them, bathe them, shampoo them, let it sit, kill them, spray the wonder side on them, let it sit. And then when it dries, that's the repellent form. So we can use them in different forms to, for different purposes. So that actually will kill your fleas and your ticks. So your essential oils going back to what can you use to repel your fleas, your ticks, and a guess what? Repels mosquitoes too. So that will help with heartworm. Now, if you're in a heartworm endemic area, make sure you watch our YouTube video on heartworm and natural remedies and the life cycle and what we recommend. So make sure you check that out. We did a, like a tutorial and a slideshow. I know a lot of people are worried about heartworm too. So with essential oils, cedar is really good. Peppermint, your geranium, your eucalyptus, Sage, lemongrass is a big one, of course. So remember lemongrass plants, lemongrass essential oil, your rosemary, you can also utilize for your essential oils to help repel. Now, 
get your pen and paper because I'm going to give you a flea and tick, like a flea repellent spray. So this is actually from Dr. Karen Becker. And so you can take eight ounces of water, four ounces of apple cider vinegar. So remember, you want the apple cider vinegar that has the mother in it. So it's like those floaties that you see in there. You're like, what is this? That's the stuff you want. So make sure you have that type of apple cider vinegar. And then you're gonna take 10 drops of neem oil. So there's the neem again. So not the essential oil. You want the expeller pressed oil. So there's a difference there. Remember, we're extracting it from the actual seed, not the plant itself, which is where the essential oil comes from. So 10 drops neem oil and then 10 drops catnip oil. Here's the cool thing about catnip. Not only does it make your cat go crazy or make them calm a lot of times, the catnip oil is actually as effective as DEET. So DEET is, we don't want DEET, right? Like cancer, cancer beware, like if you're using super strong stuff, right? We can use what nature gave us for the same things we've used DEET for. So adding 10 drops catnip oil. And then what you do is you take five drops of one of the below or like one of the listed essential oils. So lemon essential oil, lemon grass essential oil, geranium or eucalyptus. And then what you do is you mix it all up in a glass water bottle, shake it all up, and then you're going to spray, spray your pet prior to hiking, prior to walking during flea season. So you can do this a couple times a day, or sorry, a couple times a week, or you can use it just daily if you're going for a daily hike. Um, so that's definitely a great option. Once again, I always say this, make sure you're using quality essential oils that aren't adulterated. So if you're walking into like Bed Bath and Beyond, and you see essential oils there, and you're like, Dr. P said to do this. Don't use those. Make sure you're using good quality ones. Check out Animal EO. I use Young Living. doTERRA is another good option too. So that's a great DIY spray. You can always rewind once we post this and write that down if you didn't catch all of that. The products I'm recommending are safe for both dogs and cats. So you do need to be careful. Um, now with like cats, I don't typically when we're diluting, if we're using peppermint, if we're diluting it and we're using safe products, if they get like a little bit on them, they're fine. Now, if you're using essential oils and you're using ones that aren't good for cats and you're dousing them in it, be very careful. So just make sure you're using the right ones, you're using them safely. But those recipes, if you're spraying them on your dog and your cat like lays on the bed, they're going to be fine. So you just want to make sure you're using those safe essential oils to keep them healthy and safe. The other thing you can use too, so I mentioned in that spray, is apple cider vinegar. So take a 50-50 combination and combine it in a spray bottle, 50-50, so water and apple cider vinegar. Make sure it's the mother, the gross floaties, you need those, and you can spray it on your pet and it's a natural insect repellent. So that can be very powerful too. And there's a lot of other things too. You might have seen like the collars with the high frequency like repelling um, for insects. So cat, cat and dog, so C-A-T-A-N and dog, that's a, a company that is pretty popular um, that a lot of you can find online or it might be in your like pet, pet food stores, your boutique pet stores. Um, so that can be something where they're wearing this, you're putting it on them when they go for a hike and it's repelling them, you're doing the sprays. So you're using lots of different types of remedies. Combination, remember, because we're repelling, we're not usually killing. So the combinations tend to work better than just using one thing. So keep that in mind. We covered a lot of different things. So, so to summarize, remember, we wanna be looking at how do we optimize overall health? Diet is key. So go back to those foundations that we talked about with food as the foundation. Make sure we're incorporating some of that local honey. We're adding in the freshly minced garlic into their food, especially during high lean tick season. We're also looking at how do we, so that's supporting the immune system. How do we support internal detox pathways using products that have milk thistle? Um, how do we support physical body health, physical body detox, shampooing them weekly during high tick and flea season, putting the t-shirt on them, super easy. I was like mind blown. I was like, this is, I can't even believe I didn't think of this. So put a t-shirt, light colored t-shirt on them. So that way you can see if there's a, a tick on them. And yes, garlic is okay for puppies too. Using that dose, quarter teaspoon, freshly minced per 15 pounds per day. 
So if you're sticking within that, so if you have a tiny little puppy and making sure we're feeding them the best food possible, start small. If you have like a little, like, so you're having that. If they're smaller than 15 pounds, you're using an eighth of a teaspoon. So that's really important. And then we're looking at, okay, physical body, physical environment. These are all the foundations of health, right? So how can you support the environment and reducing fleas and ticks? Using things like diatomaceous earth, planting plants that repel, using essential oils on your pet, on the environment, diffusing them to help repel, um, using things like neem oil, using your apple cider vinegar sprays, using that spray mixture that I just gave you that combines a lot of those. When you do that, your need for conventional medications that have those neurotoxic side effects reduces tremendously. That's why we're here. That's why I do these because I don't want to see another pet that develops liver failure, develops seizures from taking a medication that you're using to help prevent disease, to help them. Like that's not fair. You're trying to do the best and the right thing for your pet. And so I wanna make sure that you have these natural remedies that you can start easily integrating in. And if you wanna learn more about detox, you wanna join our community, get in our VIP Natural Pet Parent Club, because we actually did an hour long webinar on fleas, ticks, heartworm. We talk about vaccines, how to keep your pet safe. We talked about how to pick the best food. We talked about allergies. There's a lot of information in there. And this month we're talking all about how and why you should be detoxing your pet. So if you're not already a member, get in our VIP Natural Pet Parent Club. I love having so many amazing pet parents that just want to learn and grow and do the right thing for their pets. So if you're following along on Instagram, click that link in our bio. You can join us at any time. Um, that webinar will be at the month. You can, at the end of the month, you can join us live and ask questions. And then you get access to all those other additional resources. And then if you have any questions, always reach out, send me a message, or you can send us an email at info at the natural pet doctor.com. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. Have a great rest of your day and have a fantastic weekend.